Happy Friday, beautiful souls. Let me hope you're having a productive day. I know I've been missing in action for a little while. But you know, we all need a little time away sometimes so that we can recharge, so that we can come back bigger and better, right? So today I wanted to explore the topic of building trust in relationships as it relates to personal or professional relationships. As I have often said on my channel, whatever topic I choose to speak on, it's something that I've experienced myself. So the so what is trust? If someone asks me that question, what does the word trust mean? I would say trust has to do with a certain level of security, a certain level of belief, a certain level of confidence, a certain level of faith that you have entrusted in a person or a thing. Trust can get broken for a number of reasons within the dynamics of a relationship, all right? And for the purpose of this video, I will be exploring five personal reasons why I think, you know, a relationship fall apart. Number one, dishonesty. You lie about the small things, you lie about bigger things. Be straightforward. Be honest. All right? Dishonesty. We don't want that within the dynamics of any relationship, whether it's personal or whether it's professional. Number two, betrayal. It is often said that betrayal comes from our friends, not our enemies, because we keep our friends very close. We keep our enemies at bay. So when, it, when the hurt is done to us, you know, it, it hits a little harder because it comes from people who we truly love. All right. So betrayal can be a hard pill to swallow. Number three, lack of communication. If a relationship is to survive, we have to talk. And we have to talk about those uncomfortable topics that we don't like exploring, you know. And it's at this time that sometimes we have to, you know, drop the act. You know, just be bear. Bear your soul. You know what I mean? Talk. Talk about every and anything. Leave nothing uncovered, so to speak. Because without communication, we have nothing. Number four, unfulfilled promises. Never you promise somebody that you're going to do something and you do not follow through. That's not a good sign. People take people at their word. So if you say you're going to be at X place at X time, I expect you to be at X place at X time, right? Follow through with your words. Let your words count. All right? And number five, it has to do with questionable behavior. I often say, it's not what I see when I'm with you, how you behave or you act. It's how you carry yourself when I'm not around. What you say that counts. Because trust and believe, your behavior says a lot about the kind of person that you are. So in order, again, for any relationship to survive, we have to be mindful of the other persons that are involved. Trust is something that can be quickly destroyed. It takes a minute. You take years and years of building something solid, a healthy relationship. And it takes just a few seconds to destroy it. Again, the dynamics of every relationship is different. You know, some people, they can get past the hurt. And they can, their relationship can become stronger, you know, as a result of trust being broken. For me personally, once trust is broken, I, I, I can't go back. I cannot look backward. You know, I take the lessons 
I consider it a loss and I move on. It is what it is, you know. So again, for the dynamics of any relationship to survive, you know, we have to be mindful of our actions. Actions are key. Our words are important. You know, how you treat other people is very important. So you have to be mindful of that. For the purpose of this video, I am going to tell you or share with you 10 ways in which I think a relationship can survive broken trust. So the 10 ways in which I think we can rebuild trust in a relationship. And again, it doesn't have to be a personal relationship. It could be a professional relationship. All right. So number one, very important. When an individual can admit to his or her mistakes, you acknowledge what you have done. That's key. Number two, again, being open and honest. You know, don't lie. Keep everything on the table. Put everything on the table. You want something to be solid, be honest. Number three, it's following through on your commitments. Your word should be your bond. People should be able to take you at your word. Number four is when you actively listen to the concerns and the feedback of what the other person is saying. From a female point of view, I can tell you, most times we, I'm an emotional person. So if I am listening to what you're saying, and, and you are saying something that, you know, you should do this. You should, I'm going to think that you're, you're always picking on me. You know, why, why are you saying this? Are you trying to hurt my feeling? So I'm not actually listening to the concerns. You know, I'm, I'm just only hearing what I want to hear. So in order again for a relationship to survive, you know, you, you have to listen. Listen to the concerns and the feedback that are given because it will help it will help to to strengthen the dynamics of the relationship it will help you as an individual to identify your weaknesses so that you can work on them to become better number five it has to do with displaying trustworthy behavior not only in front of the person but behind, it's something that should be done regularly. It should be a habit, a routine. You know, it, it's something that tells me the kind of person that you are at the core. Number six is showing empathy and understanding to the other person's feelings and needs. There's an expression that says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So let's remember before we do something, let's put ourselves in the other person's shoe and ask yourself the question, what if this same thing was done to me? How would I react? Number seven, showing respect. Never you lose sight of that word, respect. We can disagree all we want, but please remember, respect is key. Number eight, a willingness to be vulnerable. How many of us can actually say that we have been vulnerable in relationships, whether it's personal or professional? Not me. I believe that you know, I, I, I got to show this tough exterior. I'm, I'm not going to let my walls down. But, you know, when you find yourself in a situation where you want something to work, where this person means the world to you, trust and believe those walls are going to come down. Being vulnerable, bearing your soul to that one person, I'm telling you, it's like a drug. You just can't get enough of it. You know what I mean? But again, I think, you know, in order for 
something for, for a solid foundation to be formed, you have to be vulnerable. You have to show that side of you, show that human side of you. You know, vulnerability is key. It's not a weakness, in my opinion. I see it as a strength. Number nine has to do with respecting boundaries. So a lot of people, they, they, they don't respect boundaries within the dynamics of a relationship. There are certain things that I am not going to tolerate. And there are certain things that the other person is not going to tolerate. So at the end of the day, I think these things should be established from the beginning. So we know, like, listen, this is a no-no. We're not going to do this and we're not going to do that. Learn to respect other people's boundaries. Number 10 has to do with appreciation. We need to appreciate the people that we have in our life. Show appreciation. Look at the effort. The effort that an individual makes tells you just how much you mean to them. Stop looking at, what, at the grass on the other side. Water your own. Because oftentimes we keep looking on the outside, thinking it's better there until we get there and realize oh my too late all right so let's appreciate the people that we have in our lives appreciate the effort that they are making and let's remember trust takes time to build all right let your actions align with your words all right we all can create healthy relationship if we put in the time and the effort. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. I appreciate you for watching. Have an amazing weekend. Be safe and as always, be kind. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye now.